Christy Waldrop, National Education Coordinator for Jatai International. Today what we're going to be doing is going over a nice classic bob. Rebecca here has grown her bob out and now she's ready for a new summer cut. We're looking at taking off about an inch and a half and we're going to make it all one length to start out with and then we're going to whisper through a little bit of weight release. However, when it's all said and done, it will look like seamless layers. If you'll notice, she doesn't really like having a fringe or a bang, and what we're doing is pretty much cutting her actual foundation and length of the haircut up to where her face frame is. So let me get her all shampooed and we will get started. We've got her all sectioned off. What I decided to do is go from the high point ahead again section it off from the high point of the occipital bone down to the back of the ear base. However, for the beginning, what I wanna do is I'm gonna go in and clean up these little loose baby hairs that will really impede and mess with your style. So, we're gonna go in with a nape and body razor and clean these up. The nape and body razor is a state board legal straight blade that has a little bit of a guard that keeps it safe from using it on the skin. It's going to help to completely clean up all of this hair through here and soften this hairline that otherwise would mess with your bob. As I'm using this, I'm making sure it is parallel to the skin. If we do not put it parallel to the skin and use a 45 degree or a 90 degree, it's going to cut and or it will give razor burn to the client. The whole time that I'm using the nape and body, I am making sure to keep it good and moist. And I like to use our Blade Glide, which is our pharmaceutical grade cutting solution. It has pharmaceutical grade silicone. It gives a really nice soft edge to start out with and a good palette for the hairline. And all these little baby hairs and that calic or that hair print that's in this back area, it controls it from the beginning. We're gonna take Rebecca's hair to about right here. Like I said before, it's about an inch and a half shorter than what it is. And today, my tool of choice is the plier. The plier is our straight razor. You can use it with or without the guard. I choose to use it without the guard. Um, it's a little bit of a tool that you want to definitely practice with before you just start cutting with. We're also gonna use smaller subsections than what you would normally use with the feather razor. Now, if you're wanting to learn how to use the plier because you've never used it before, you may wanna look at our Flexion. If you notice, the Flexion is shaped exactly like the plier. However, we use the styling blade that is interchangeable with our other feather razors. The best telltale as to if a subsection is too large is if you go in and you start cutting and you have to work a lot harder with the razor the much you might want to. I'm just holding my hand stationary, moving with a very tight wrist and it's parallel to the hair. As you can see, we cut a nice straight line. I'm holding the razor in the crook of my finger between the index and my middle finger. We go in, double check, the straightness of the line. It's a good straight line. As I was cutting, I used the back of the razor using going from center to left. When I was going center to right, I used the tip of the blade because we want to make sure to use all of our razor blades, whether it's the feather razor or the plier. As we get a little bit higher, you'll notice my blade opens up a little bit more. My wrist gets a little bit more fluid that's gonna to help to give a softer, more refined edge on her bob. Check and see how it's falling. Then we're gonna go through 
on this side. Do the same thing. It's not a good idea to try and use these tools, the razor, if it's pulling or trying to work too hard through the hair. What happens is it winds up giving you split ends and dryness through the end. all the hair out of the way instead of clipping it because it would just have to go direct it over here. For the most part, the length and the weight of her hair is going to do really well to just over direct it that way. We did one side and now we're working on the opposite side. In a few minutes, we're going to go through and we're going to remove weight and give definition by going directionally diagonally this way and then crisscrossing it and diagonally doing the weight release the opposite direction. That gives a really nice softness and layered system in there without layering the hair. As in my cuts before, we do a zero degree and then we over direct back and cut straight across to maintain our corners. If I need to cut it shorter later, I can. I want to make sure it's at zero degree. If you notice, her head is straight up, nice natural fall. Even on a bob, I like to have the hair at natural fall because otherwise it's going to be too much of an undercut. I like to be able to have a little bit of kick if we want or for it to go under as well. Push it forward where her nice natural parting is. Bring it down. Her hair was all one length before, so that's why we are also cutting more and more, is because her hair had already started out at one length. So of course that means we're gonna have more subsections and the haircut is gonna take a little bit longer. Bringing this around and back. As we discussed before, slightly over directed, cut through nice and clean in this area. We had a little bit of a swing that I don't really want to see. And that comes from the over direction. The nice part is I'm able to see what the hair is doing and how it's falling. So that makes for a good straight line across. It's not necessary to get every little hair in place right now. So give us just a few minutes and we're gonna go in and remove some length and create layers without cutting layers. Finish the perimeter of her haircut now we're going to go in and do her layers without layers. We're going to go from at the recession of her head down to right behind her ear at the ear base. The reason that I'm doing this is because I want a great diagonal. This is where her hair is the thickest and we're going to remove some weight and create visual interest within the cut. Going in somewhat deep but not too deep. Removing those V's because that helps to create the defined structure within the cut. I only want this top layer, so it's almost like skipping one section and moving to the next. I don't want to collapse her style or give her too many layers. So I'm just going in from the midsection. I'm going to take out one area right here. I did a slice and then I did a V. OK. 
Okay, once again, we're starting to see beveling. I removed a lot of weight. However, you can't see it, it's seamless. One more section on the top. I parted her hair from top of the from the top of the head to the top of the ear and top of the head to top of the ear and now I'm just letting it fall the way that it wants to. We're going to go in and remove a little bit of weight again from the surface. Less is more. I can always take more off. I cannot put it back on. And I know Rebecca, if I remove too much, she'll never let me live it down. So, we're going to do a little bit and then I'm going to look at it, see if we want to do more and move forward from there. If you'll give me just a few minutes, I'm going to look at this cut and then we're going to move to the other side and remove some more weight. Now we have gone in and we've sectioned the hair from the recession of the head down to the ear base the opposite direction of how we just did the last time. The reason for this is it helps to give it structural difference as well as more fluidity and movement. Once again, it starts to bevel as we remove weight. One more inch as we did on the other side. Going up the hairline. Fine end of the hair or the comb. Lift out 45 degrees. Remove some. Remove a slice. Do it again. Be cautious and careful not to go over the same area that you've already been on. Another inch. Continue to slice through. Not going too deep, just deep enough to make a huge difference within the hair. We're gonna move two more subsections and then we will go to the sides. Last section the side area. I'm going to dampen this just a smidge. All right, so now we're going to finish up what we've started on this top surface area. Finishing up that top surface area. Have a lot of great visual interest going on. It's beveling again, like what we had talked about in the past. Now we're gonna go in, blow dry it, and finish up the style. We just finished her blow dry. I'm loving the texture and the movement and the shape of this overall non-layered haircut. We cut in one solid line through the base and then we went in diagonally and removed weight everywhere and through this front face or the front frame area the only thing that I really need to do is go in slice out a couple of pieces to firm it up and to blend it into the rest of the style. And I think we are going to be finished. Oh, Becca, I can't wait for you to see this. It's young and it's hip. 
All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I'm Christy Waldrop with Jatai International, and I look forward to seeing you again on Off the Cutting Floor. Thank you.